Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation with Rodian Schwartz FPC. In this short presentation, we'll guide you through basic power versus frequency measurements using a Rodian Schwartz FPC series spectrum analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of spectrum analyzers and how they're operated. If you're new to spectrum analyzers, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the video Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation before continuing with this presentation. The first configuration task when using any spectrum analyzer is entering the stop and start frequencies. On the FPC, we access the frequency settings using the frequency hard key. If we're interested in the range of 909 to 929 MHz, we use start frequency to enter our start value and stop frequency to enter our stop value using the keypad and unit keys. The start and stop frequencies are shown at the bottom of the display. The more common way to enter a frequency range is using center and span. We use the frequency hard key to enter our center frequency, in this case 919 MHz, and then use the span hard key to enter our span, here 20 MHz. As before, our center and span are displayed below the trace. Additional span settings on the FPC include full span, zero span, and last span. As the name implies, full span displays the full frequency range supported by the analyzer, here 3 GHz, and the center frequency is automatically set to the center of the span. Last span simply changes the span back to its previous value. You can think of this as an undo button. Zero span is a special case where the analyzer stays on a single frequency instead of sweeping. Zero span measurements on the FPC are covered in a separate presentation. The next fundamental parameter is reference level. On the FPC, we access reference level by pressing the amplitude hard key. We usually want to set our reference level to be slightly above the highest measured signal amplitude. The easiest way to configure reference level is to use auto range and let the analyzer automatically determine the proper reference level. Proper selection of the reference level is important and in particular, we want to avoid setting the reference level too low since this leads to distortion of our measured signal. If we see signal distortion, or if the top of the trace is being cut off, these are good indications that our reference level is set too low. In extreme cases, you may also see IF overload on the screen. We can either use auto range or manually adjust our reference level such that the top of our signal is at least slightly below the reference level. Note that in this case, increasing our reference level also caused an automatic increase in attenuation to 35 dB. This occurred in order to compensate for the higher expected input signal power. Resolution bandwidth and video bandwidth are extremely important settings when using a spectrum analyzer. On the FPC, we access both resolution and video bandwidth settings by pressing the bandwidth hard key. Although the analyzer will automatically choose a resolution and video bandwidth based on the span, in most cases, we'll want to manually set a resolution bandwidth. Remember that resolution bandwidth has an effect on our noise floor, our sweep time, and on our ability to resolve or separate adjacent signals. As we decrease resolution bandwidth, our sweep time will increase and the noise floor will drop. Note that decreasing the noise floor has made it possible to see very small spurious emissions that were previously not visible. The other major impact resolution bandwidth has is on our ability to resolve or separate adjacent signals. Resolution bandwidth determines the spacing of signals that we can resolve. As we lower the resolution bandwidth, we can separate more closely spaced signals. Now let's talk about video bandwidth. In most cases, letting the analyzer automatically set video bandwidth works reasonably well. In the case of noisy signals, however, we can clean up the trace by lowering the video bandwidth. Remember that video bandwidth simply smooths the trace. It doesn't affect things like the noise floor or signal resolution in the same way that resolution bandwidth does. In this presentation, we've introduced you to the four most important configuration parameters when using the FPC. Center and span, reference level, resolution bandwidth, and video bandwidth. For center, span, and reference level, it's not very hard to decide what values to use. Resolution bandwidth, on the other hand, involves trade-offs between noise floor, signal separation, and sweep speed, so the best resolution bandwidth setting will depend on the application or measurement task. And we saw how video bandwidth affects the appearance of a trace, but doesn't affect how that trace is measured. This concludes our presentation, 
basic spectrum analyzer operation with a Rodian Schwartz FPC. If you'd like to learn more about spectrum analysis, common spectrum analyzer measurements, or Rodian Schwartz spectrum analyzers, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.